Good morning, everybody. We're in Bristol, Indiana. I have my trailer loaded up and we're headed home. It's gonna be about a day and a half to get home yet. station next door. I'll show you what I got here. We've got two units. One and two. All tied down. That's what it looks like from the back. Trailers on a trailer. We're trailering the trailers home. We'll be back tomorrow afternoon sometime and we'll see what they have for us from there. For now, we gotta get past Chicago again. I wonder what happened over there. Yikes. I think you and I can both guess exactly what happened there. I think someone forgot they were pulling a trailer. Just 
little half tank, so we've been doing really good on fuel this trip. Well, we're gonna fuel up here. We're actually gonna fuel up at the Quick Trip across the street from Flying J because Quick Trip's got cheaper fuel today. I don't know what's going on with Flying J, but Quick Trip's beating you. Turn left on Elder Avenue, CR 
R8 and that. Turn right in 300 meters. Meters. Turn right on. Connecting road and then. Approaching destination on the right side. In 10 meters. Ah, somebody's in my spot. Mr. Green Hauler over there. Didn't you see my name on that spot? It's really small, written in the gravel. This is Trucker Josh's parking spot, official. This guy, this guy. Oh well, I'll forgive him. I'll forgive him this time. Now this guy's taking up two spots. Could have snugged it up a little bit there. I think I can fit in here yet though. Yeah, I think I'm gonna turn around and park right there. I think I can fit in there. What do you think? I'm gonna do a little U ball. A turn of U. Yeah, I can fit in there. Oh, yeah. I gotta do a little trucker parallel park. Right in here. That's a pretty cool load. That thing's huge. Looks way bigger up close. That's awesome. There we go, a parallel parked in there. Is a little tight. Not too bad though. I've gotten it into tighter spots before, but let's see how much room do we got at the back here. Okay. Huh. Well, this is where we're going to bed. Like usual, thanks for hanging out with me and keeping me company today. It was just a day of straight driving, pretty much. As you could tell, most of the footage was just of the road. We drove about uh, just over a thousand kilometers, about 620, 630 miles. Full day. I had 30 minutes or so left on my clock when I stopped here. So in 10 hours, <clears throat> I'm gonna get up, open up my hood, do my pre-trip on the truck, make sure everything's good to go, everything's safe for the highway. I don't want anything falling off and hurting any of you on the road. So I went over the truck when I parked here just now. Everything looks good. I'll double check everything again in the morning. So at the evening, that's called a post-trip when you park your truck. You just, it's, it's not as in-depth as a pre-trip. A post-trip is pretty much just, you know, you make sure that your engine's not leaking oil. Maybe you check your uh, check your oil, make sure you got oil in there if you want to, or you can check that in the morning. I mean, you're gonna have to check that in the morning anyway. But I make sure there's nothing leaking, no fluid leaking. Make sure that all the tires still have air in it, because it's always better uh, to find out now, so that I can call a tire guy to come fix my tire now, and I'm not worrying about that first thing in the morning when I'm trying to get going. Maybe make sure all your tires have air in it. Uh, check all your load securement again. I always check every time I stop the truck. Uh, I always just walk around the truck real quick. Just give all, you know, check all the straps, chains and everything. Make sure everything's still tight. Make sure nothing's shifting. Make sure nothing's like shaking and rubbing. Make sure nothing's damaged or getting damaged or, you know, with uh, a load like this behind me, I look at the unit itself, make sure that no rocks were thrown up. Cause it's happened before where debris gets thrown up from other vehicles. It actually hasn't happened to me, but I, I saw trailers come in on another trailer. One of our guys who, uh, uh, something had flown off another truck. I don't know if it was a big rock or if it was a piece of wood or something. I don't know. Something flew off another truck, ended up hitting one of the trailers in the back on, on our trailer, hitting the load, and it damaged it. So the sooner you see that damage, the better. Because if that does happen, you have to document it right away, take pictures and send it into the office, cover your butt to make sure that you document it and say, hey, this happened today. Either I don't know what happened or something flew up from the road, just letting you know you don't want to show up and deliver something that's damaged and surprise them with it. That's rude and unprofessional <laughs> and makes you look very bad. So uh, the best thing is 
don't let the freight get damaged. But sometimes, you know, rocks get thrown up. In Wisconsin, it makes me very nervous because the I've shown you and talked about it many times before. The gravel trucks in Wisconsin don't have mud flaps. How is that allowed? It's, it's not a law there. They're allowed to drive down the highway. Like gravel trucks of all vehicles, gravel trucks, the ones that are going to throw up rocks the most because they drive into these gravel pits and job sites and construction sites and they pick up stones in their tires and then they come out on the freeway and they got no mud flaps or, or rock guards or anything. These rocks are flying out all over into traffic and there's no laws in Wisconsin saying that they have to have mud flaps on their, on their gravel trucks. That is just pff, blows my mind. Like that's the most, that's the first ones that you tell to put mud flaps on their trucks. Right? The first one, even if like, if I owned a gravel truck business in Wisconsin, I don't care if the law says I don't need them. I'd put them on there anyway. It's just, it's just the nice thing to do. So that you're not throwing rocks at it. Anyways, driving through Wisconsin, these rocks can be flying up off these gravel trucks. So they'll go flying past you, right? And then they'll throw rocks at you. I've gotten them in my window before. Hasn't happened in a little while, but it can go up over your truck, hit your freight behind you. Now you got damaged freight. It's, but why isn't there mud flaps on your trucks in Wisconsin? <laughs> Be a good fellow highway user and put mud flaps on your trucks, please, for all of us. What if someone had their window rolled down and the rock went right through their window and hit them in the head and kill somebody? Anyway, that's a topic for a different video, but yeah. That's all I have for today. So I'll see you tomorrow right here, 4 p.m. Central Time. I will have to, I will try my best to get that up there. You want to support the channel the best way you can do it, it is free. You know what I'm going to say. Leave a comment down below. If you liked it, show me that by hitting the, the thumbs up button. Let's see if we can get to 1,500 likes on this video. 1,500. I think we can do it. I'll see you guys tomorrow.